Hello and welcome back to Bannerlord. Now, there is a new update. There is a new update for the game, which basically makes it a little more difficult for factions to snowball. And obviously, you've seen the Southern Empire in my game specifically become extremely powerful, literally just because a lot of lords from all over the place, and I'm talking about uh, Sturgia, from Batania, from anywhere, basically, were offended by the fact that enemies would besiege their settlements but the thing is is that they would not actually lose any relation as a result of it and as a result they would then leave their original faction and join whoever is becoming stronger and that is exactly what happened to uh, kind of induce this terrible terrible uh, snowball effect which has plagued the game since its early access, early access launch and uh, hopefully we will be able to uh, maybe come back from this. I don't know whether it's going to be possible but we'll try our very best to see if we can maybe do something about it. Basically what I'm just trying to do here by taking this is I'm hoping that we will be able to maybe just increase our influence a little bit. Not not our, not the stat, the, not the stat influence but just in general trying to increase our strength within the, uh, you know, the land of Calradia, basically. Just trying to make uh, Vlandia into a stronger faction by expanding its territory in this way. Now, bear in mind that I am, of course, in command of this army. We have over 500 units, and I have actually checked to see the town nearby, and I thought to myself, oh, yes, I would love to be able to siege a town because I personally find town sieges to be extremely fun but unfortunately it has over 700 units in the garrison and let's just say that that is a bit too much it is a bit too much so i'm hoping that maybe one of the other people that is uh having an army at the moment i'm hoping that that person will decide hey you know what it's probably about time that i head back you know head down to uh to azurai territory and see if i can help out mr barney Beartield. i would very much appreciate that I, I i hope that they might decide to do something along those lines but let's see what happens here maybe oh look they're, they're running they're running they're actually they're actually running what 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 is actually going on there? Okay, I'm going to try and take out this guy if I can. Ow. <laughs> okay, he barely did any damage to me. He literally did two damage because he hit my shoulder. There we go, that guy's dead now as well. Always go for the overhead. I always do that. Maybe that's not such a good idea most of the time. Why am I moving so slowly? Not entirely sure there. Okay, so yeah, now all we need to do is, uh, well, try to uh, get ourselves in a situation where we can actually help out the other forces attempting to get in here. That's basically it, you know. What? Why, why is this guy taking so much damage? What? Oh, yeah, they do that, don't they, nowadays? Yes. In, uh, in Warband, that guy would have, been, would have been dead, you know. He would have been so, so dead. But unfortunately, Bannerlord, they have uh, decided to make enemies much, much more difficult to deal with. And uh, as you can quite clearly see, we took a massive amount of damage right there. All right. So I guess the best thing that I can do is actually just show you the siege. And we'll actually see a little bit of action here. So what is actually going on? Can we... Wait a minute. Is there anything under there? No. Okay, that is just a way for them to spawn in troops and then the troops will come in there and you won't be able to see it. So it's just, you know, immersion, atmosphere, um, you know, atmosphere, that kind of thing. So anyway, look at this. Personally, I absolutely love the kinds of immersive battles that you're going to get out of this. And the fact that they have added an after-death camera as well, I mean, that's obvious, you know, we've, had, we've seen this multiple times before. But the after-death camera has wonderful controls, it's very responsive, and that's the thing. There are a variety of after-death camera controls in Warband mods. Some of them good, some of them not so good, but this, this one in Bannerlord is very nice. It's very easy to use. You can use the speed up, as you can see. You can go up and down. It's very, very nice. And, as you can see, 
the uh, Azurai having the last stand here. They're taking out enemies left and right. And, uh, well, it's about time for them to go down, isn't it? It is about time for them to go down. Even though they're actually doing a very good job of dealing massive damage to us. As you can see, they've actually taken out 81. Actually, more than that. As you, as you can see, they've taken, you know, taken 81 plus 74 enemies out. And they've done a very good job of that. A very, very good job indeed. Just wish I would have been able to survive until the end. But you know how it is. You know how it is. Sometimes I get to go into a particular area. And that area is overwhelmed by a bunch of enemy units and then I just get swarmed and killed instantly but that's that's not a that's not a particularly big deal I realize now what I should have done was retreated to the stairs much much earlier kept my shield up not tried to attack that much and just tried to take stock with what I actually have at my disposal because I could have used my pole arm could have used my throwing weapons and I probably would have dealt a lot of lethal damage with those options so it would have probably been a better idea to do it that way. But otherwise, we are victorious, which is exactly what we need. And there we go, seven renown for us right there. Now what I am actually hoping is I don't really care whether I get this for myself personally. I don't really mind if they give this to someone else or whatever the case. But the one thing that I would like is a siege attack from huge amounts of Azurai vassals. That would be a perfect situation for us right here. And we might very well be able to do that. So who knows? Maybe it will happen. Maybe it won't happen. And uh, yeah, we're going to be pretty happy with that. Oh yeah, by the way, I, give Kir I gave Kiroslava one of our two-handed swords. I don't know whether it's any good. That's the one that I created a while ago. And let me just say it has... 76 cutting damage, 104 length. I think it seems okay. It's got a pretty decent swing speed and all that stuff, so we'll see how she does with it. But uh, yeah, anyway, this is the... Um, did you see that? That uh, that relation going down? That's the relation that is supposed to go down against the aggressor when they do a siege. So in other words, because I am the leader of the army, that person that owns the castle previously, they lose relation with the aggressor which is me in this case but if it was are you serious they they literally don't want me to go in there even though this is my castle well technically it's not my castle but you know what i mean i can't believe they don't want me to go in there that is utterly preposterous and that, that is also in my opinion something that needs to be a little bit uh, looked at because i personally feel like if you are the owner or a member of that faction you should be able to go into the fief that you've just taken. I personally feel like it is kind of a bit silly to not be able to do that. But uh, I guess it's because it's owned by someone that hates us, maybe. That might very well be the case. And that, again, puts a huge amount of importance on relation and being, being amicable with everyone in the game, which is, I gotta say, maybe a little bit restrictive, perhaps. Because if you think about it, what would you prefer to do in a sandbox game? Would you prefer to be pigeonholed into doing the good guy thing? Or would you rather have the have the choice about what you would like to do? I don't know. Personally, I'd like the choice because you never know. Maybe you want to role play as something. Maybe you want to role play as a bandit lord of some kind. And that brings me to the next point. The thug units that you can actually get in taverns, their stats are really, really bad. So I'm not entirely sure how... A bandit lord would actually work in this case but obviously it is very early days it has literally just come out so there's a whole bunch left to do and uh, yeah okay so I'm not entirely sure where to go now to be fair so Sonala was taken <gasps> ah fantastic okay 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 so yes I'm actually going to disband my army now uh, the owner of Sanala. Okay, so now they've uh, the developers have also changed how influence actually works and how much um, how much influence gains you how much relation basically. So if I were to say select one hundred, then I'm going to gain a massive amount of relation with this guy. 
And if I gain, if I do 300, then I'm going to gain even more relation with this guy. So I'm going to do 100 because uh, this guy already kind of hates me and I kind of want to do... Look at that. Your relation increased by 23. So they have made it much easier to make friends in your chosen faction or in general with people, with people in general. And that places an even bigger importance on gaining influence. And that means obviously, you know, doing your thing with selling prisoners or donating prisoners to the, the dungeon and uh, so on. So that's the kind of thing that I think is really, really cool and adds a whole bunch of different options for players to play around with. And I think it is a very nice decision to do that because beforehand, don't know whether you noticed, but whenever I would use a, a little bit of influence to gain some uh, vote or uh, you know to, to get some re relation or whatever it would give me literally nothing it would give give me nothing at all basically i mean it might as well have been nothing pretty much okay so what's actually going on here why are they all fighting in a row what is this <laughs> what this this is this is kind of weird they're all in different rows i mean i can understand that they're fighting the row of cavalry on the enemy's side, but why are all the numbers underneath them? Must have been all separate armies? That's actually kind of hilarious. Let's join them. Okay, help help his help his party. Oh, well, they actually have 308 against 62, so this is basically pointless for me to do this, but I might be able to take some of them prisoner or something. Yeah, I guess maybe it would be kind of advantageous for us, but I then have to remind myself and maybe you as well i don't know maybe you maybe you need reminding maybe you don't but anyway the point is is that as a ride doesn't have a huge amount of influence remaining and i'm talking about their territory you know their 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 sphere of influence is shrinking by the day and it is not not looking good for them whatsoever it really isn't i mean obviously their their strength on the diplomacy screen is dwindling very very quickly indeed you know whenever i say the word dwindling i always think of um our reinforcements are dwindling from star wars battlefront <laughs> uh, uh yeah i remember playing as uh playing as the empire or something like that and then it would always be that very uh hoity-toity you know snooty uh english you know galactic republic no no not republic galactic empire guy just going like our, our reinforcements are dwindling and so on. Uh, that just always reminds me of that. Very, very funny indeed. But anyway, let's tell our people to charge in. This is going to be a very easy victory for us, but I'm hopeful that I might be able to get a kill at least. No, no, maybe not. Nah, I probably should have gone in here by myself, but I was kind of waiting for our forces to see what they wanted to do. But, uh, oh well, never mind. That was extremely fast. To be expected, isn't it? It's to be expected, considering we outnumbered them so incredibly heavily. And we're probably going to gain, like, one renown for this or something like that. Maybe not even that, to be honest. Let's have a look. Yes, not not even any renown. That is kind of hilarious. Okay, so we didn't lose anyone from my army, so that's absolutely fine. We did lose eight from others, but that's also fine. I don't have a problem with that. So we actually took Sonala. Do you remember me saying earlier on in this uh, in this episode that uh, it would be good to have someone actually come over here and help us? Maybe I didn't say that. Hmm. Now I'm actually wondering whether I even said that. Maybe I just thought it. Anyway, I could recruit some troops. Don't know whether I want to do that. Do I? Because Azari, they're kind of at war against us at the moment. Probably not make the not make the biggest sense. But I guess I'll just wait here for a little bit of time. Oh, it seems like oh, wait a minute. Someone has actually left. Someone defected Vlandia and has joined probably the Southern Empire or Batania. I hope they haven't uh, taken any of the... Wow. Any of the fiefs uh, nearby to my castle. That would be pretty bad. But anyway, there's Askar over there. I don't exactly know how many they have in the garrison, but I would assume it's probably about 700. So that's a... Uh, well, that's an army effort, isn't it? That is definitely an army effort. So I'm wondering whether I should call for my own army. That might be making quite a bit of sense at this point. There's 500 in the garrison there. But uh, you can see that their garrison is actually very limited. They mostly have militia. 
and I'm talking about the spearmen and the archers in this case. So it's going to be very difficult for them to stand up against a very large army. So I'm thinking maybe we'll call for another one. Shall we? Mm, not entirely sure. Let's see. Okay, so apparently people want to uh, give this castle to me, which I don't really appreciate, to be honest. I mean, I, I appreciate them wanting to give that to me, but I'm actually going to try and give this to Akram, if at all possible. My charm is now 38. And uh, as you can see, my relation... Oh, there we go. They actually gave it to Akram. Fantastic. That's good. Okay. And do you want to resolve the owner of Sanala? I guess I could do that. Yeah, we'll give it to this guy. And we'll just do 50 relation. Well, not 50 relation, but 50 influence. He can have that. And we'll just increase. Look at that. Even spending the lowest amount of influence gives you a massive amount of relation with these guys. And getting positive relation with every single clan in your territory, that's pretty much priceless, I think. That really makes a huge difference. Anyway, let's have a look. This guy is actually... Okay, he's doing all right. Let's see if I can actually bring anyone here. Okay, yes, yeah, so we can bring Ingaltha and Ullman and Sylvind. We can basically bring all of them if we want to, but Sylvind is actually really far away, as you can see. He's six days away which is really bad. So let's just get all these guys. They're only one day away, and we might very well be able to take it. As you can see, we have 500. Our cohesion is 94. So we'll see if this can actually work. It would be great if it could. Oh, there's actually Thomond. Oh, okay, he's actually already here. Wow, that was really fast. Okay, so he was obviously scouting out a couple of potential targets, no doubt. And as you can see, this is basically it. They just have two towns remaining. Don't know how many units they have in the other one. But, uh, whoa, 77 looters? Hello there. I think I will want to fight these. Uh, I'm just going to actually uh, level up a couple of people before we head in there because the experience is probably going to be quite useful, I suppose. It might be a little bit useful, at least. And here we go. That's fine. Let's get some clan warriors. And there we have it. All right, so that seems pretty good to me. And it seems like those prisoners in my prisoner's hold are probably not going to be able to be persuaded to join me, which is actually kind of sad, but uh, oh well, never mind. It's not a, not a terribly big loss, but um, they're, they're quite strong, you know? They're quite strong, those particular enemies. So it would be quite nice to have them. But uh, I do have quite a few prisoners in my garrison... So I would be able to take them and, you know, get some influence for that. Because as you can see, I actually have 90, 94 influence now after recruiting all of, these, all, all of these lords. So I guess the best thing that I can do right now is literally just start the siege. And we'll see how that goes. Okay, so I'm actually going to get... Should I get ballistas? I think I might just get ballistas straight up. I think that might be the most fun because they are extremely fast to build. And look at that, we've already got 366. What a crazy, crazy number. Unfortunately, that number is not going to be good enough to be able to deal with the garrison here. Even though this garrison is primarily, well, quite obviously uh, militia, they are still going to do quite a good job. And I know a bunch of people have actually told me that I can place my siege weapons so for example i can put them into reserve so i can basically have them in reserve for another use so oh never mind apparently i put it in reserve but it didn't make any difference i guess i just have to be a bit quicker to pause the game or something like that so i can just pause it right here and then boom and hopefully they won't shoot at it oh they did shoot at it but uh, it didn't seem to do that much all right so i need that last guy to come and join us Ullman. I need Ullman and I need someone else to come and join us, I think. I'm hoping that he's actually going to be coming, because if he doesn't, then we might have some issues here. That would be kind of bad. Now, there's Tov... There's Tovia. Ah, oh, remember Tovia? Yeah, yeah, exactly. All right. Ah, there's Ullman. Okay, so we have 450 now, and the enemy has 471. I suppose this is a good a time as any to head on in. I can't really do much more than this. So, why not? Let's do it. And we'll see how it goes. Because, obviously, in a manual siege, it's going to be a bit dicey. But I'm hopeful that, because there are so many militia 
in the garrison that we're going to have an easier time than we suspect. And uh, also bear in mind that obviously the nighttime restrictions and indeed deficits and disadvantages, whatever you want to call them, that the archers used to have, they don't have those anymore because they've removed them. They were a little bit too strong, in my opinion, the uh, debuffs that nighttime would provide. But I think there should probably be a little debuff at night. But not a, not a massive one, just one that maybe reduces people's accuracy by, I don't know, a small percentage, like maybe 10%, 15 something like that. Because, let's face it, most of the time, enemies will generally not attack in the dead of night, because they can't see anything, surely. So it might make sense to make it, uh, make it, I don't know, maybe, maybe make it depend on something else. I mean, I'm, I'm obviously not developing the game, so, I, I, you know, <laughs> maybe, uh, maybe just have it be a, like a flat value of, of, or something, you know, I don't know. But otherwise, let's try and get up there. They, uh, wait a minute. I think we might actually be able to get up here without he, uh, without even being hit. I think that would be quite nice. But uh, I actually wonder what would happen if they actually attempted to get the ladders off the walls while we're on it. What do you think would happen? Well, we'd probably take a lot of damage, wouldn't we? And what? There's no one here? Oh, there's the fork. Look at that. You can actually pick up the fork and use it. That is amazing. Look at that. That's pretty cool. I like that. Unfortunately, I'm, I'm not the defender, so it's basically pointless for me to do that. But that seems like a really... Ow! Are you serious? Come on. You, 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 you're mean. You're mean, friend. Ow. Okay, yeah, my sword is not exactly fast. And this guy is uh, making mincemeat out of me right now. Okay, so I'm going to have to be a little bit careful here. So let me actually just... Get my thrown weapons out real quick. Okay, so let's see. Okay, no, that's not good enough. Okay, there we go. That's good enough. That was a nice headshot right there. I missed that one? Really? <laughs> okay. Uh, I, I basically aimed it in exactly the same position and he wasn't moving, so that's a bit, that's a bit weird. Anyway, let's see if I can maybe uh, do some damage to this guy. Oh, 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 did you see that? He literally lowered, I think he lowered his shield right at the end there. So that was really kind of hilarious because it was a nice overhead, but I uh, didn't expect to hit him with it. Unfortunately, this, uh, this weapon is not really meant for this. So yeah, this is kind of when I wish I had a crossbow or something like that and not thrown weapons because I would probably be able to use them quite nicely here. So let's see if I can do some damage to this guy at least. There we go. Okay. Oh, did he did he drop his arrows? I might be able to use them. There we go. That guy's dead as well. Okay. Can, can I use them? No, no. He only dropped his melee weapon because, of course, I didn't kill him while he had his bow equipped. So that's not exactly great. But we're 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 slowly like uh, draining a couple of people out here, and uh, having having them maybe die. Oh no. Bash him. There we go. Yes. And then he parried me. Of course he did. There we are. He's dead. Oh, hello. Oh, did you see that? Oh, he delayed his attack right there. That was really, really good of him. Yeah, unfortunately, this seems like um, a pretty much lost battle that we don't seem to be able to really penetrate their defenses at all. And I'm actually kind of wondering, yeah, as you can see, look at that. We will just have to retreat, like, just straight up. I feel very sad about that, to be honest, because I think it would have been very cool if we would have been able to do this. But uh, I think that's another case of auto-resolve would probably have given us quite a, quite, a, quite a few kills. And we probably would have been able to not, maybe not take it, but we probably would have done a lot of damage to the garrison so that someone else could come in and maybe take it. And that's, uh, that's also another point that I want to make here. The greater good of the faction is a pretty interesting notion in Bannerlord because you think, you know, in, in Warband you think to yourself, okay, I'm going to go and I'm going to take this castle by myself because that's the only way that I'm going to be able to 
basically gain anything. You know, it's going to be pretty difficult to gain something if I am constantly going on campaign with other vassals. But in Bannerlord, that's completely different because what happens is if you go on, you know, a siege campaign or do a field battle or something like that, you're all sharing equal risk because the AI is not going to be as easily able to recuperate their losses as they are in warband. So it really makes a huge difference. Also, if you do end up taking something on a campaign, then the people with you are maybe going to support you uh, in the vote to, to uh, whoever gains, you know, whoever gains control over the over the, over the particular the fief in question. And I think that actually seems like a really really cool system, because if you think about it, in warband, as I say, if you went on a campaign with people, you would basically never get the fief unless you were a bit lucky, perhaps. But uh, that, that's been my experience at the very least. It's always been a, a case of, yeah, okay, I've got to go and take this castle or town by myself just so that I can, you know, gain a, a, a fief and somewhere to place my units, somewhere to garrison and, and so on. So, yeah, it's really nice that they have worked on the whole sharing of fiefs in this iteration of Man and Blade. I think it's very, very nicely done. I actually wanted to go into a tournament here, but... Unfortunately, that will not be the case this time around. I'm just going to wait here for some time, wait wait for our troops to restore themselves a little. Okay, so we're just going to donate these uh, these prisoners to the uh, garrison here, and uh, we now have 188 influence. Let's actually take a look if there's a tournament. There is actually a tournament, so I will participate in this, and we'll see if there's anything good. Ah, oh, okay, so it's just a tile horse. Mm. Not the biggest fan of that, but I guess uh, it might be quite fun just to participate in a in a tournament. I actually very much like the tournaments in Bannerlord. Uh, more so now that I have gotten a little bit more used to the combat, because let's face it, I was pretty awful when I started. Yes, pretty awful. But that that's exactly how it was in Warband as well. When I first started playing Warband, I was like, what, how do, what, what, what do I do? What do I do? You know, that's the kind of thing. And the thing is, it is very different. I just got to stress that. For those of you that have not played uh, Bannerlord, it is very different from Warband. So when you do get around to playing it at some point, just bear that in mind. Because it does have a very, very different feel to it. And anyone that says it doesn't, well, you know what they're, you know what they're about. Anyway, let's see if we can... Ah, oh, there we go. Whoa, that was really nice. Very nice hit right there. She was actually attempting to poke us in the face at the same time, but uh, we actually did a pretty decent job. All right, so we're actually against a Batanian Raider in the next round. This might actually be kind of interesting. Okay, I've got a sword, and that's it. Okay, he doesn't have a helm. Doesn't have a helm, so I feel like we will probably be fine. Or not. Ow. Yeah, see? No helm. <laughs> No helm, literally overheads, overheads. That's that's all you need to do, especially uh, in those kinds of situations. Okay, so now we have a two versus two. I'm actually with Kiraslava. I think I have a pretty decent chance of winning this because Kiraslava's on my team. And uh, let's face it, I don't really, I don't really rate these guys at all. I don't think they're going to be that good in comparison to Kiraslava being on my team. I think that she's uh, really good. So it's highly unlikely that. Okay, never mind. Wow, uh, that's actually kind of, it's actually kind of frightening that they were able to do that much damage. Yeah, they seem very on the ball, as you can see. They seem very much active about what they can do and what they're attempting to do as well. Nice, there we go. Nice couch right there. Did you see that? Oh yeah, fantastic. And now maybe I can do a little bit of manual damage. There we go, 64 in the shoulder. And dead. Nice. Cool. Yeah, I like it. I like it. I'm getting much better, in my opinion, at, uh, at the whole fighting thing. And uh, I think that is literally just just down to getting a feel for the slashing polearm. Because before, I basically had no feedback. I basically had no feedback about how I can hit someone and how much damage that deals and so on and so forth. Because let's just face it, I'm pretty awful with swords for some reason. I don't know why I'm so awful with swords uh, in this game in comparison to Warband, because swords are actually my favorite weapon, or one of my favorite weapons, 
in that, but uh, in in Battle Lord, it's it's a little bit different. Feels feels very different. I'm gonna try and shield bash right here. Ah, a little bit too a little bit too slow. The overhead is a little bit too slow, so definitely want to try for something a little bit different. Sometimes maybe a maybe a backhand slash. Backhand slashes are pretty fast, as you can see. And usually, if your opponent is using an overhead or maybe a forehand swing, then you want to go for a backhand swing or even a thrust if you're at a particularly good range. And uh, that's the thing. I'm giving you advice about fighting. You probably don't want to really listen to it that much, but those those particular tips I gave you right there, they actually are pretty solid. It's just theory. You know, in theory, I'm actually okay. But practically, eh, you know, I could I could do better sometimes. You know, I can definitely do better sometimes. Anyway, we're actually here at Jaculan at the moment. And I'm um, actually wondering when our wife is uh, potentially going to be expecting. I don't know when that's going to happen. But uh, if Barney actually ends up dying, then it would be a pretty fantastic idea for us to uh, potentially have someone to pass on the bloodline, so to speak. Because as far as I'm aware, I'm not entirely sure if the system is even implemented, but if it isn't, then it would be quite good to actually uh, just test it out and see what's going on, you know. But if it is, then we definitely need to uh, get going on that pretty soonish. Okay, so just going to recruit uh, five of these. These are all Vlandians, and we'll just try to level them up as soon as possible. There is actually a tournament going on here as well. Do you want to see another one? I don't know whether you want to see another one. I know a couple of people really, really like the tournaments and and, and other people don't so much. But this is actually a maybe good weapon. I actually don't know. I've never seen this weapon before. So we'll see how it goes. All right, so I'm just gonna, just gonna bet a huge amount right here. Well, as much as I can bet at least. And I'm gonna go for a couch, I think. Maybe a sofa. You know. Oh yeah. Oh, Kiroslava, I'm so sorry. <laughs> uh, that doesn't really... Uh, that's not very nice, is it? Oh, that was a nice hit. Oh, that was a very, very nice hit on the head right there. Very good. Almost pinpoint accuracy, if I do say so myself. Let me just pat myself on the back a little bit. I, it's a rare occurrence that I get to do that. And there we go. There's a little, little bit more. I think we could kill these guys pretty easily. They've only got a little bit of HP left. One of them does, at least. There we go. Oh, that was our other shield maiden. Okay. Okay, so I can literally just stand here and just poke at him a little bit. And who, who's on our team? Oh, the Vlandian champion. I probably should have let him die or something. I mean, that... that uh, yeah, I don't really want to fight a Vlandian champion in the final round. Let's just say that. So maybe I can just let him deal with these enemies here. <laughs> that doesn't seem to be happening either way anyway, because uh, he's not really doing that well with the lance. He's, uh, he's kind of not getting that much run up and there's no speed uh, to give him the damage that he needs. But there you go, we actually did get, get through. And we're actually up against... Oh, wow. Yeah. Mm, these these actually might be kind of difficult. Now, I'm given a lance again. So that should be fine. Because I can probably just go and couch against these guys. Or not, as the case may be. Because sometimes I am pretty awful at couching. But that guy actually couched instead and actually killed someone. So that actually worked out very nicely for us. Okay, I've got to be a bit careful here. I really don't want to get killed by some random spear. What? Ah, th th I think there's a little hill there. There's a little bump in the tournament ground. And that actually makes it so that my uh, attack is a little uneven. Which is actually kind of interesting. I did not expect that. Oh, nice. Oh, was that actually Jin? Was that actually Jin? Wow, she is she's an absolute beast right now. I'm actually kind of surprised that uh, our companions have become so powerful here. Anyway, we have the Vlandian champion on our side, and we're actually up against... Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, dear. Okay, yeah, this, this, this is, this is going to go badly. Oh, nice hit. Nice hit, Vlandian champion. Good work. All right, don't get killed now, sir. 
I very much hope that you'll be able to carry me through here, even though I was hoping that you might die earlier. So please be a little bit lenient, perhaps. Oh, no, there we go. We just cut him down. <laughs> I actually wonder whether I was out of his peripheral vision. No way, right? No way. He definitely saw me coming. He just ignored me because he thought I was going to be absolutely terrible. But anyway, there's the Vlandian champion that we have literally been with the whole way through. And uh, it's going to be two-handed. Yes, of course it is. Okay. Kind of wish we had, like, spare weapons or something like that on the battlefield. Oh, no. Why am I... Why am I... I don't, see, what, what's happening with that? Why am I trying to block from the right when it's obvious he's actually trying to do an overhead? I don't know. It was basically just luck that he didn't hit me. Or, or a little bit of dodging on my part, maybe. But anyway, we did get what we came here to get, which was a random sword that I have no idea if it's actually any good. Is it actually any good? Uh, apparently not, according to my other stats here. So who knows? Maybe someone else could use it. As you can see, Laska has a, has a better weapon. Uh, she has a two-handed, so that do doesn't actually work. But I could give it to her and then actually give her, uh, see a little bit... Uh, uh, I I don't really like it that much, to be honest. I think this crafted two-handed axe looks really, really good for her, but it is... I don't know. She's just much better with two-handed weapons than one-handed, so I thought, why not? Let's give her one of those. And what is she wearing? Oh, she's actually using one of these. And where's the where's the sword again? There it is. So as you can see, I've already got given Jin something so amazing that the other thing really just doesn't compare. And she has a two-handed axe, which is a lot better. So, well, she's just a two-handed person. So that's exactly what's going on there. All right, so everyone seems absolutely fine. And I guess that's actually going to be it for this episode because we did attempt a siege down here. It didn't really go too well, but we have of course taken a castle and uh, we didn't help with the town siege but at least we have a little bit of a presence down in Azerai territory because the what I'm th actually thinking of is if I eh, shouldn't say if I should say when the southern empire actually declares war on us again then we have a launching pad to attack various other fiefs in the area and hopefully we'll be able to do something about that I thank you very much for watching and I will see you next time